Hello everybody, it is Brooke with The Junk Parlor hopping on to share with you some vintage books. These are like large children's books, some are coloring books or activity books, a little bit of everything. I wanted to hop on here and share them this way because I think a lot of times it's really hard to sell old books. And I don't know if you can hear my dog, but Amazon holiday season is here in the neighborhood even more. And when Bella sees, hears, senses that it's some kind of delivery truck, she goes psycho. So hopefully that's not too annoying. The books are awesome. I mean, the graphics are great. Um, they bring back lots of memories a lot of times. I mean, it's just great artwork, great alphabet things. I mean, just so many cool things. And you want to use those books. You want to sell those books, pass them on to somebody else to use them. And what happens when you put them in your booth or even in your own store, a lot of times they're old. So they're not a lot of times they are old. So they're fragile. So a lot of times they're fragile. And what happens when people start flipping through them, then they tear pages, they rip, things get bent, and it just is sad um, because the books have maintained their great condition for 50 plus years, um, and then you know, they get damaged when you're trying to sell them. So it's it's very frustrating. I have sold a lot of books during my Facebook Live and Instagram Live sales, but I'm kind of, since we moved, um, kind of pivoting in my business. And so I'm not doing those live sales um, as frequently as I used to. I used to do them twice a week for years. We're talking like three, four years. And so tapering down to that, to doing maybe four or none. And um, so I'm trying to figure out how can I get these awesome things into somebody's hands? Because what can you do with them? You can tear them apart. I know that makes some people cry, but I look at it, it, I look at it as what is going to get these books used? You, I don't want somebody to buy it and then put it in a drawer and never touch it, use it, enjoy it, see it. I want things to be used. And, I, and that's probably stemming back to my grandma. So she probably moved out of her house and into assisted living at like 96. I mean, grandma was getting on the riding lawnmower at 96. I mean, you should have seen how she had like things jerry-rigged to step up on it. I mean, that alone was like a disaster waiting to happen. But when we were cleaning out her house so that she could move to um, assisted living, she had cedar chest upon cedar chest upon cedar chest full of keepsakes. Could have been grandpa's slacks, could have been grandpa's suit, could have been grandpa's ties, could have been my mom's Barbie that she never used and was in a box, could have been books, could have been anything and everything you can think of. And the one thing grandma said as we clean those things out is, why did I save them? Brooke, don't you be saving those quilts. You use them. Brooke, don't you be saving the toys. Let the kids play with them. Use them. Um, you know, her mindset was totally different by the end of her life um, than it was when she was, you know, buying the, these items or using these items or making these items like the quilts. So I have really, um, that really stuck with me, resonated with me. And so even though I have some really nice quilts that she has stitched or that her mom had stitched, um, I go ahead and use them because otherwise they're just sitting in a drawer. And that is honestly why I would rather somebody ripped up pages out of a book so that they could frame the ones that spoke to them or um, do a junk journal with the ones that spoke to them or read to their grandkids the book and let the kids tear it up or whatever. So, um, you know, I, I really value using things. What can you do with old books? I mean, obviously I mentioned a few as far as actually using them, 
framing them. You can frame the whole book. You A lot of these books you can fold um, to the, the page that you want visible and frame the whole book. You can tear out pages. You can make a little clothesline with some twine or baker's uh, string. Use clothespins or paper clips and hang a little, make a little bunting essentially. You could hot glue it on. You could put it with rickrack. Um, you can put it under like if you have a glass console or a glass desk, you know, where people maybe put pictures or, or um, notes that they needed to remember or whatever. You could do something with books there. You could decoupage it onto something. You know, there are lots of ways you can show these things off. Flip it to a different page and have it on a book bookshelf or on an open cabinet um, and change it out frequently. You can keep, you can display it with keeping um, it in better condition if you wanted to, if you didn't want to frame it, you didn't want to hot glue it. Um, you can use clear thumbtacks, the ones that have the fatter heads, whether it's plastic or metal, I guess it doesn't matter. But you punch the hole into the drywall so that the flat surface then pins the page or book in between the tack, the head of the tack, and your drywall. So there's no hole actually going through the book. So that is an option for some of those nicer things. Now, I have never tried to do command strip on books. Um, one of the things that we talk about on Instagram a lot is the annoyance of when dealers use permanent marker and price things, or they put tape on old um, boxes or packaging, or they put tape or sticker tags on these old books. And it's just like, why? But one um, tip that you can try, not a guarantee that it's gonna work, but heat up that adhesive with a blow dryer. And a lot of times that is gonna help that tag or tape peel off. And then if you are a reseller, please, please, please do not put sticky stuff on a book. Now, you might notice that I have little post-its. So that has been the best thing that I have found because the post-its do not um, stick well enough that they're gonna pull off or damage that paper item. Um, sometimes though, if I've had something stuck with a lot of pressure, maybe in a heat, a hot and cold fluctuating space, um, something bright, um, the colored post-its, they do bleed sometimes. So then you might have a little section of hot pink or something. Um, so my suggestion is, and this isn't even one, but my suggestion is you just get that like a generic light yellow color and that often um, works. You can also use a paper clips to paper clip a tag to your paper goods, your ephemera. Um, you can tie a string around like the um, binding going through like the middle of a book and have a tag, you know, threaded through that um, twine. So those would be a couple ways that you could price things without damaging. So let's go ahead and get started. I have most of these books priced, so you can comment um, if you are interested in purchasing. If I if you haven't purchased with me before, I will need your email address and zip code so that I can get you invoiced and shipping calculated. So let's get started. This Little Fireman's is a 1953 and it is $20. You can see that someone has been coloring. This My Picture Word Dictionary is 
is a 1951 copyright date. Another Merrill book, this ABC Color As You Learn. It is a 1948 copyright date for $15. United States map coloring book. It is a Whitman Publishing Company 1955 and it is $25. ABC paint book for $10. It is a Whitman Publishing Company, 1942. If you are a 
enjoying this video or any of my videos, please be sure to click that subscribe button and like the video and leave a comment. It really does make a difference on growing my YouTube channel and I so appreciate you. And we have Best Yet and it is a Southfield company for $20. As you can see here, it seems like a lot of the sketches have been traced in pencil. So someone probably used some tracing paper to transfer images. Fun Day Coloring, a Merrill 1962 for $15. a Whitman train trip to color. It is a 1953 copyright date for $25. This is Reading Coloring Fun. This is another Merrill Publishing. It is a 1951 copyright for $15. This is a Samuel Lowe Company, Animals on the Farm, for $15. this ABC alphabet book for $25. It is a 1940 copyright date and it is a Samuel Lowe company. Children's Garden Verse is a Merrill Publishing Company book. Okay, we have Copycat Coloring Book for $15. This is a Southfield Publishing Company.
This is a Merrill 1941, our own farm to color for $20. This is a 1937 Children of Other Lands for $25. It is a Merrill Publishing Company coloring book. Mammoth Coloring Book is a Southfield company, 1945 for $15. Weta Brush, this is another Southfield publishing company. It's a 1953 for $15. All right, thanks for watching. If you want to purchase any of the books, just comment below. I will need your email address and your zip code. But thanks so much for watching. I think that one of the reasons that I'm always hesitant about sharing every single page of a book is just because I don't know people's interest level, especially when I was doing my live sales on social. Um, and so I always try to go through things really quickly on there. So if you liked books, hopefully you stuck around and you saw some, some books that gave you some good memories and maybe one that you want to make your own. So thanks so much for watching guys. See you next time.